right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Bellied Up Podcast brought to you by Fleet Farm. We love it. Now, Miles, we got Christmas coming up, and I'm wondering, dude, fella, friend, guy, I, I buddy. guy, yeah, guy. <laughs> Do you have any Christmas traditions that you really like? In your family that you're just, you can't wait to do this, this Christmas. You do it every year. Yeah. So um, my family, weirdly enough, you know, some people are ham, turkey, you know, all those things. For some reason, my family started a tradition. I don't know. I want to say 15 winters ago. About 15 winters 15 ago. 15 winters ago. Uh, my mom makes an absolute amazing rack of sauerkraut ribs every uh oh Christmas wow Eve. sauerkraut ribs sauerkraut ribs so there's no actual like barbecue sauce or anything yeah so i don't know how she cooks it up but they know there's sauerkraut and ribs involved and i tell you what those suckers just fall off the bone wow i've never had sauerkraut ribs you're missing out they're good uh, maybe now, i can get the recipe whether or not you're gonna eat the sauerkraut that comes with it is up to each person but the ribs the flavor you can't go wrong with it so you're leaving sauerkraut on the on the plate kind of yeah mm. i think leaving it's a- also one of more of those things that i probably think it's fine but the texture and the smell and the you know gas that you get later is something that i'm just leaving on the table oh I, you, know? you know i didn't realize sauerkraut makes you gassy I, huh? I it does for my dad i know that so oh, sorry yeah. dad but uh He's got yeah. the sauerkraut farts. Yeah. Yeah, it, That'll happen. happen on Christmas. That'll you know? happen. <laughs> you know. Um, what about you, Charles? Well, you we, got a big family. Mm, we do. As everyone knows. And so you got to have some traditions. Well, yeah. And actually, this tradition is largely because we have a big family. Because you can't get gifts for everybody, right? Um, you must really go in on the gifts. You get you, you basically we pull names at Thanksgiving. Yep. We pull names and we only get gifts for one other person. OK, mm-hmm. so and then this is that's like kind of the boring part. It's like, oh, I got your be- parents get gifts for everyone. Uh. Well, Santa does. Um, but uh, no, we get gifts for one of our siblings. You pick one person in the family to get a gift to. That's the boring part. The fun part is you have to write a roast for them. Oh. So every Christmas, everybody in my family gets roasted. I actually really like this. I actually don't even want a gift. I want just someone to roast me. Yeah. I think because yeah. we actually now we're starting to have some. I got some nieces and nephews now. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, you know, giving siblings gifts. We're kind of like, eh, you know, whatever. But, you know, let's give gifts for the kids or whatever. But a roast every year is yeah. something I get on board with. It's perfect. It really is. I mean, and it's it's, uh, you know, and you can always tell. There's always the crunch time about a half hour before it's like <laughs> we're doing gimmicks. That's what we call them. Gimmicks or whatever. And uh, you can just everyone's just writing. No like, talking quickly. a half hour before because because everyone prepared and got the roast ahead of time. Right? Yeah, yeah. And if yours if yours sucks, people are going to let you have it like this is and like you get roasted about how bad your roast was. Yeah. hundred percent. And if you like give up, if you say something nice about the like sometimes when we bring a uh, you know, someone marries in, you know, and, and they start saying and they don't want to, like, offend somebody. That's usually how it goes. They don't want to offend somebody because they're too nice. Or like you came into the oh, wrong yeah. family for that. Yeah. And there are a lot of boo. There's a lot of booze. But then what someone will pick up the slack because they're like, OK, we appreciate that you didn't want to be mean to someone in this family. But to show how mean you could be, someone will add some verses into their roast of someone of their to person, help out, to yeah. help out, yeah. to roast, to give them some digs, smart, you know. The, the other thing is, if you get my mom often, uh, you'll use that as an opportunity. That's like when you're doing a Comedy Central roast, you know, at the beginning of it, you roast everybody else at the roast. If you get the you mom, it's them. like a, you get to roast everyone. You get to roast everyone. Yeah, because Mom's like the wild card, really. You tend to not want to roast mom because she like, you know, she's like, but you, you give she's her a mom. few ribbings in there, you know, and she's pretty she's pretty great. And uh but everybody else is then fair game. So that's you. See, that now goes. here's what I have to say. If that works for a family of 14. Yeah. I'm looking at, you know, some families that are families of four. 
<clears throat> and I think it, it will get just a little too awkward. Yeah. To, you know, it's like <laughs> that is true. You know, you go like if you us go and- four <laughs> sitting here would just start roasting <laughs> each other. It's like really not enough roasting. Yeah, there's not enough crowd. You need to uh, because even crowd. my family's a family of six, mm-hmm. and I'm thinking I don't, I don't know. I don't know if there's gonna be. It's like me and my younger brother are going to be go really hard at everyone and like maybe make someone cry. And then the rest of them aren't going to go so bad. And then we're going to look really bad. <laughs> yeah. And you don't want to be the person to start their tr- tradition and then go real hard in the paint. Yes. And then it's just awkward. Yeah. You know, you almost you almost got to lean into it a little bit. You know? Yeah. But uh, the, I mean, there's a reason why the Comedy Central roasts have that many people up there yeah if it was a roast of charlie barons and it was me and two other people up there roasting you it'd be weird well you know it's like oh these guys just really hate him it it, it would just be like my stand-up show in fargo yeah (laughs) i did do a roast yeah you did you came in hot you either got to do one roast or you got to have like 10 people there that's true but I suppose with in-laws and all of that, it's a number starts to get up there. It does. It does. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. I'm going to propose it to my family, see what they say. You know, I'm sure there's a couple family members in your family that can't take it. Some can, some can't, you know. Every, but that's just the beauty of roasting. Everybody pretends to be able to take it in the moment. Now, whether or not they go back home and cry, uh, that's up to them. But that doesn't matter. It's not your problem. You don't live with them anymore. No. no exactly. We're all over that. You got to get some thicker skin. I tell you what, that's the Christmas cheer right there. <laughs> Go to Christmas, <laughs> rip on each other, go home and cry. <laughs> That's what Christmas is all about, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There have been you some know, tears. You know what? The Baron's household sounds fun on Christmas. <laughs> you know Everyone's what? just like walking on eggshells, you know, <laughs> like just like, oh, God. Well, there's no eggshells anymore. We've all just destroyed the. It would be nice if somebody in that family would walk on eggshells. And not just walk in the door. Hey, you look like shit. Hey, Dad, how are you? You know? Yeah. Charlie, you owe me money. Where is it? Yeah. Like, Dad, I just got here. You know? <laughs> Can't we have some eggnog before that? You know? Yeah. Um. No. So, Honestly, I'd love to be a fly on the wall at the Barons. You're welcome Christmas. anytime. <laughs> okay. You're welcome anytime. You tell that to my mom. If I go to your house over her house on For Christmas, Christmas well, she'll lose her shit. Well, then I'm really going to get a roast that's not welcome. So No. No. You you might be. <sighs> Someday, maybe, Charlie. Oof. When my parents are gone and your parents are still around, maybe I'll be at your Christmas. <laughs> Or we could do a Christmas exchange. You know, I go to your family, you go to my family. Oh, that would my my family would love that. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't know what that says about you and I, but you know, or my family, but they would love to see you over me. Oh, so, geez, yeah. Going, I love this podcast. Yeah, it's I, always it's always just you know, a wonderful thing. I'm starting to thing. think this podcast feels a little bit what it's like to be at a Baron's Christmas. Just a little roasty. Yeah. A little roasty toasty. Hey, should we take some callers? We should take some callers. I'm going to have another us? beer so I can recover. That a boy. All right. Hello. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is Ben in Waukesha. Oh, Ben in Waukesha. How you doing, Ben? Doing pretty well. But you guys? Oh, can't we're, complain. We're feeling good. Doing good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, ben, why don't you belly up to the bar with us? Tell us what's on your mind. Well, I, I just wanted to say that uh, this is my second time calling you guys. Oh, geez. Well, now you're gonna you're 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 just gonna lay that out there. You're not gonna say if we gave you so, good advice, bad advice. Well, it, I I was gonna ex- ex- explain because uh, I called. The last time talking about my uh the butt sweat. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, how's that treating you? It's b- pr- probably better so, now with the winter, huh? I was I was gonna say there's there's good and bad to it. Uh, the good part is winter, and I don't got sweat no more. The bad part is uh, I have other butt issues that need uh, attending to surgery. <laughs> All right. Wait. I guess we have turned into an anal podcast. <laughs> now, did you say surgery? Uh, yes, I just left the doctor's office. Oh, no. No, no. Well, hold on. No, hold on. 
he, so you, you you called in about butt swass, swass as we would call it. Um, well, yeah. The day that we're recording next, you went to a doctor's appointment for your ass, and you're leaving saying that you have no. to have ass surgery. No, I I didn't go to the doctor's till a little bit after, not the day after. Oh, so did it's it's a it's it's a separate issue from butt sweat, but you know. Okay. But well, you know what? I can't believe I'm saying this, but why don't you lay it on us? What's going on? Yeah, what's going on? Not literally, don't literally lay your ass on us, but literally, what's going on? So I'm going to put my ass up to the bar instead of. Instead of <laughs> <going up. laughs> why don't you ass up to the bar and tell us what's on mm. your mind? Uh, I just got a because uh, my job, I, I drive, and common issues are having cysts. Uh, I need to get that removed. Cysts. Oh, you got a cyst? Yeah, a, a preliminary or something. I think it's like a preliminary cyst or something. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm a little out of my scope here. Yeah. <laughs> well, do they use a scope to get rid of it? Or? Yeah, yeah. What's... Uh, is this a... Is this, I, I have... Uh, is what? it... Is it a invasive uh, surgery there? Or is it a clipper and go kind of thing? Um, I, I haven't been fully briefed on what what the surgery is yet. I'm going to try not to say anything about the brief pun right there, but I liked it. <laughs> I liked it. Uh, how are you feeling about it? Are you feeling good? Are you feeling nervous? Yeah, you seem your voice seems a no, little I, shaky I, currently. Yeah, Can you talk to us about it. I, I um I like because I'm gonna be put down, which is fine. I've I've, I've been put under before. Okay, okay there's uh, a difference the between being put under and being put down. <laughs> yeah, okay. You're not a dog with with bad hips. Okay, you're uh, you know, you're a human being. You're with a, a little human bit being. Of butt problems. You're gonna okay? be put under, but you're coming back to us. All right. So, so are you nervous about yeah, going to uh, sleep? Is that is that part of the deal? No, I've I've been put to sleep before. I've I've had to be put to uh, put to sleep to uh, get my wisdom teeth out. Okay. Um, so it, so, and, so what? It, talk to us. You know, what are you nervous uh, about? You seem a little nervous. Just the surgery part. I, I never had I never had surgery before. You just said like, that you had your unquote, wisdom teeth out. Were those pulled or were those that Is that, count? Is that count as a surgery? Yeah, it's kind of a minor one. Um, so it, I mean, it, do they say how long this, uh, surgery would be time-wise? No, it, they, they haven't said yet. It, I'm, I gotta get a call back to get, to get it scheduled. Okay. All right. Well, look, that is a scary thing. That's a scary thing for sure. But you, you know, I bet you that it's probably a common procedure. Cis happen. Uh, you know, cis happen, yeah. kind of like shit happens. Cis yeah. happens. Cis you know? happen. Uh, you know what? You know what? I, I want to give you an assist right now. Oh, that's good. See Miles is giving you. Uh, assist. I'm gonna give you an assist. He's got assist, Miles. He doesn't need that. <laughs> shit. Uh, I don't need a second one. I'm gonna give you a surgery right now. Okay. Um, here's the deal. Oh dear, it's worse. Think about all the people who also are having an assist surgery. And just just tell yourself, hey, I'm I'm not that special. Everything's gonna go right. It's gonna go good. It's another day at the office for the old surgeon, and uh, you'll be back on your ass in no time. Yeah, that is a that is some- that's comforting advice. You know, you're not that special. <laughs> I I love that, Miles. You're like, hey, can you comfort me in my time of need? Yeah, you're not special. No one loves you. Jeez, Louise. Well, good, good cop, bad cop. Your turn. Now. Okay, my turn. Um, listen, yeah, let's look at the benefits here. You're gonna be, you're gonna be out for a little bit. You're gonna have some, probably some pretty cool dreams. <clears throat> you're gonna go to another place, you know, with the dreamscape. Probably gonna get access to some fun there, pharmaceuticals. There, there could be some benefit on that, on the back end uh, of the surgery. You <laughs> really might get some ass. You might, you'll, ass, ass, ass ass yep you, you'll be able to relax a lot catch up on some netflix you know so 
And I, th- I, th- you know, I think that's far away from any uh, thing that can really go that far wrong. I mean, I'm not a doctor, clearly, because I'm sitting in a bar on a Monday afternoon. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I think there's a few doctors that actually do that. To be honest <laughs> with you. It sounds like a cyst surgery is a pretty common thing. And I think you're gonna. I think you're gonna be fine. Did you could the- also go on social media and look at all the cyst popping videos that are out there and just so you can get a good eyeball on what's going to be going on. Yeah, I don't know the uh, d- d- w- where <laughs> can I ask where on the on the uh, ass situation <laughs> the cyst is? I was avoiding this question. Was are like, we talking a cheek? I was, I'm going to be honest. I was trying to keep it sphincter. I, know. I was trying to keep it sphincter level conversation <laughs> here and now you're trying to get into the old Is it on one of the cheeks? Colon here. No, it's in the crack. Oh, it's oh, in God. the Okay, got it. So you haven't been able to wear a thong in a while, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I, I think it's kind of uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah I, well, um, <laughs> man, I'm real. you know, like how far? <laughs> you know, this, hey, this is also a metaphor for life. Sometimes <laughs> you're going to be face down, ass up, having <laughs> surgery. And when you think it's all not going too well, something's right around the corner that's truly going to assist you in having a better life. I think your I think your moment's right around the corner. You're gonna have your surgery, and then uh, something great's gonna happen. That's what I believe. And what you want to do is you want to look at the globe, and you want to look at the number of billions of people around the globe, and each and every one of those folks has an ass. For the most part, I think most. Yes. So you got to think you got to think that whatever this doctor is seeing, he has seen a He's million seen times a before. Million before. So don't worry about it. Relax. Enjoy the process. You know, take some time to reflect here. And you know what? I think going into it, your 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 best asset is your attitude. Yeah. Really. And just uh, do your best to keep a good attitude. And I think it's all going to turn out in the end. But. <laughs> but. But. Oh, my God. <laughs> Did we get you to hang up? He hates this so much. How, how are. <laughs> listen, we are we are not doctors and we have a terrible bedside manner. How, <laughs> you can't take anything seriously. How have we done for you? Uh, do you feel better or worse at this point in the conversation? I tell you what, Charlie, we really wrecked them. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you laughing or dying to get I, off this phone call? I, I, no, I, I I am laughing. I'm very mean. I'm gonna be thinking about this when I'm put down or put to sleep. Okay. <laughs> That's the last thing you want to be to be in in, in your the the anesthesiologist face down ass to be, up. Yeah, face down want. ass up and just thinking of Charlie and Miles. You know. Uh, hey, what, let us know. Funny? Let us know when your surgery is. We'll be there. We'll uh, we'll just yeah. We'll, yeah, yeah. I'd we'll, like to get a good look at it we'll, as well. well see if you're if you're downplaying it or not. We'll be in the room. We'll we'll do a live podcast for you <laughs> while you're getting this <laughs> while you're having this happen. How does that sound? L- l- live commentation. Your yeah. live commentation. Yeah. Oh yeah. All Boy. right. This guy's well, really got an ass uh, on him. I tell you what. <laughs> so let. <laughs> How are you feeling now? How are you feeling? Better or worse from when you started the call? Honestly, uh, a little bit better. I <laughs> could have gone either way right there. I thought you were going to say, just... I don't feel any different. Honestly, <laughs> way worse. All right. Well, you feel a little better. That's good. That's good. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, it's just an it's just an afternoon nap. Exactly. <laughs> That's a great. What I say, your best asset is an attitude, and your attitude is that you're just going in for a nap. You're like Michael Jackson, just an induced nap. That's what he used to do. Yeah, it's a very, a very, very expensive nap. Yes. Oh yeah, the price of it. That's another thing. Jeez, are they going to tell you the price up front, or is this like uh, roll the dice and see how much of your house you get a mortgage? I actually don't know if that's how that works. I don't know anything about mortgaging a house such as that. Like, I remember in Monopoly, I was like, I don't get 
I can just flip this card over and then I just get more money. I don't understand. Do I own this still? What's happening? So yeah, I don't really that's understand maybe a topic it either. For another that's podcast, another podcast. But, yeah, uh, sorry, I'm confusing the deal here. Anyway, do you have anything else so this you'd is, like to? I'd say? like to. Well, hold on. I'd like to point out that this is how Charlie and I deal with serious stuff, is by not being serious at all. No, in fact, if you put a counter up, we probably made like 26 ass puns here, and uh, 20 of them were the same ass pun we just repeated over and yeah. over again. <laughs> But, you know, <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my. Holy. Oh. Holy. How's uh, how's business otherwise? <laughs> yeah, how's the road? Um, I, I, I mean, I mean, hey, the road, roads are hey, they're, they're clear. Okay. Good to know. For, for how for how for how Wisconsin roads can be, they're they're pretty they're pretty good. Pretty good for December, huh? Oh yeah, no no snow yet. Oh good. <laughs> good. We <laughs> can just go <laughs> from just letting his ass have it for like ten minutes and then we're like but all the roads out there. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to. I was like very worried about this very serious thing about going. <laughs> Miles, he's got a lot going on in his life. It's not just a surgery, and I don't want to half ass yeah, this don't interview. Let... <laughs> 27. Oh. No, 28. You said but. Roads are clear and the farms are plowed. Roads are clear and the farms are plowed. You see, that's that's the time that's of year to attitude. get out there. That's the attitude. Anything else going on? You know, believe it or not, that wasn't the main thing I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get to it then. Let's get to it. This is the whole podcast at this point. You know, we as we uh, assumed that that's why you called in. <laughs> But you know what assuming does, Charlie? It makes, makes an, an ass, ass out of you and me. And me. So we Louise. apologize. Go ahead. What do you want to talk about? Oh, oh no, that, that that was much much more funny than, than the original topic. But uh, I, I I'm a father of a one year old daughter, and I just wanted advice of uh, Midwest ways to to raise her. Oh, well, well, this should be good because be good. both of us have zero kids, zero kids. I can I uh, before I left uh, my home today, I told my houseplant that I loved it. So that's um, start there. You know, tell your your you said it was a daughter. Daughter, yes. Tell okay. her that you love her. Let's start there. Make sure to water her every day. Make sure she gets properly watered and fed. Um, I mean, want to change out the soil once in a while. Make yes. sure that, you know, you don't want to be sitting in dirty soil all the time. Nope. Nope. Now, I, this actually, uh, are you, so she's a mid uh, Midwest daughter. I, and I, uh, look, are you going to teach her, are, are you guys a hunting family? No, not really. Are you a fishing family? Um, no. <laughs> okay. That's where the advice are begins. Are you a family? Of course. Uh, I don't. I don't know. You, what, do you, what do you mean? No, I, yes, we're family. Okay, okay. God. Okay. I was like, God, I'm a dick. I think this I guy's, th this guy's <laughs> everything's estranged, and now we're making ass jokes and making fun of his family. Oh, you God. know what? I think this could be a good place to start. I think that um, if you can teach her to hunt and to fish, that is probably going to be a good starting point. And I know that you pr don't do that. I don't know if you don't like it or whatnot, but there, she's going to be met with a lot of fellas as she gets older who are going to claim to know that they know what they're doing, hunting and fishing. And there's a good chance they really don't. So if she can be prepared to call them out on their BS, that's going to save you from having a pain in the ass, you know, son-in-law, you know. Well, that and you should start letting her know now on how to avoid guys like Charlie and I because that's they will yeah. do to you. Otherwise, you will just never hear the end back end of it. <laughs> 
wondering. I knew you were going to try. <laughs> I, I really I forced that in try. there. <laughs> if you wanted to date a couple of assholes, oh, you really forced just forced it in there, didn't you? Yeah. Um. You, yeah. You're going to want to teach her young to avoid guys like Charlie and I, and that's really, I think, I think the uh, the point of this whole call is look for the warning signs. Signs if he. Uh, you know, has a big Wisconsin accent and uh, tries to tell your folks he says hi. Say, hey, steer clear. And if he drinks Bush Light, tell her to steer clear. Congratulations. Are you enjoying being a dad? You know, it's 50 <laughs> 50. The best part of the day is when I put her to sleep. Okay. Oh, wow. wow. That's good. What's your because favorite she part? She looks so cute laying there sleeping and all that. Yeah. yeah. What? Yes. What's your? Nice, 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 quiet. Well, she's young yet. She's young yet. She probably just does a lot of crying, a lot of changing. But is she starting to get a nice personality going? Smile at you a little bit. Oh, oh, oh yeah. She she definitely smiling. Okay. Nice. Well, there you go. Nice. She's got her mother's attitude. Well, well that's we'll, on you, buddy. Well, that's on you. Don't well, act like that's her fault. You, you're a part of this too. What would her mother say about? Uh, the, would her mother say she's got her father's attitude, or would her mother agree? Uh, absolutely not. Yeah, she wouldn't agree. Yeah, we, we, we have we have discussed it, and we have agreed. Agreed to disagree, or agreed that it's her her. I, I, I agree. Agreed that it's her attitude. Oh, wow. That's good. Well, you that's guys good. have common ground there. That's a good attitude. And that's your best asset. So <laughs> this has been good, man. It was good to talk to you again. I'm glad you got the last thing figured out based off of the seasons. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and now you're going to get your. Uh, he's going to get his ass really figured out this winter. He's going to get figured out. Okay. Uh, don't let him wreck you. Okay. <laughs> That was not a pun, guys. That was not a pun. I was it, I was trying for a pun, but now I realize now I realize what I said, and that probably Rekia? was not sensitive. Yeah, you know? <laughs> what? Oh well, man, we're idiots. Well, we appreciate you calling in again, man. It was good to talk to you, and have a safe surgery, have a wonderful holiday, and tell your family we says hi. Yeah. Tell your daughter, tell your your wife, and, and, and you know what? We'll be we'll be uh, we'll, we'll be, be thinking in that of you. Operating room with you. We'll yeah, we'll mentally. be mentally. We'll be there for you. Call it. Call it afterwards and okay. let us know how it goes. Yeah, I'll call you a third time and talk about my ass again. Yeah. That'd be fantastic. Well, hopefully by then we don't have to talk much about your ass because everything's figured out. But, oh, but, good point. But oh. we'd still love to talk but. about. Uh, the up, the ass update. Okay. Yeah, we're just being a little tongue in cheek this podcast. Yeah, you know? it's very cheeky. Very, we were being a little cheeky, you know. Yeah. Well, this is the Midwest goodbye again, you know, and <laughs> you, right. you, I bet you just want to see us in your rear view <laughs> mirror. Rear view mirror, don't yeah. Oh, uh, now we'll honk at you now. Oh. I want to be looking looking down at your shoes. I'm getting getting my ass worked on. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> face down, ass up. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> all right. That's on a that funny note, image. we love you and good luck. Yeah. And hopefully everything comes out all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Nine man. times out of ten, it comes out all right. All right. It's a good odds. Good odds. Great odds. <laughs> all right. All right. See ya. See ya. <laughs> Ah, poor guy. Yeah. We are absolute dicks. We are <sighs> assholes. <laughs> we are assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, who do we got on the line? Hey, what's up, guys? You got Josh in Ohio. Josh in Ohio. What's cooking, my guy? Oh, nothing much. Just enjoying the nice cloudy days. How about you guys? Same. Oh, yeah. Same. A little snow on the ground. You got snow out there? Uh, no, we had snow a couple of weeks ago, but it was actually 50s last week, so you got to love that Midwest up and down. Yeah, yeah, you got the fake, hey, it's winter now. You got, went back to fall for a few days there, I see. Oh, yeah. 
Well, why don't you belly up well, to I'm, the bar I'm, with us and tell us what's on your mind? Oh, absolutely. Well, I need some Midwest advice. Um, need some Midwest advice about idiots at boat launches and just guys that shouldn't own boats to begin with. Well, you're talking to them. Yeah. So yep. You, you came, came to, to the, the right, right place. place. What is your first question? <laughs> Well, back in June, I was at the lake and I was lined up at the boat launch about 10 boats ahead of me. And at the end, we had about 20 boats behind us. And the cops had the boat launch closed and wouldn't let anyone launch the boat on this lake because this one idiot who was pulling his pontoon out, pulled, pulled his pontoon up with his wife. And well, that's that's issue one is just him and his wife. But Did they <laughs> get the into a fight? Issue, no, but women typically boats out as good as guys. So. Oh, you're going, you know, right. wow. you know, the gals can do it. It's really an experience thing, but let's hear it. <laughs> so anyways, they we want to pull this pontoon out and he has, he thinks he's got the pontoon on those little slits, you know, when you go to pull it out and he's got them off the slits. And when he goes to pull it out, half the pontoons leaning against the dock and He's stuck in this place now that if he backs up, the whole pontoon is taken out this wooden dock. And if he pulls it up, the pontoon's falling off the side into the lake sideways. So, <laughs> so you're really caught between a boat and a dock is really what you a uh, hard dock. Yeah. Now you're, you're really giving women a lot of shit, but it sounds like this guy had no idea what he was doing, period. Well, that, that's my issue. And that, that's not just an Ohio <laughs> boat launching. That's a, this is a this is a common Midwest issue. Okay, that well, did you causing- ask the guy how many drinks he had had? Because let's start there. Have you ever, uh, you know, tried to keep anything uh, in the water when you've had a couple? No, that's a good point. He should have had someone else try and park been- it. He shouldn't have been behind the wheel is what I'm saying. Oh, ex- exactly. That's a good point. And then, well, then by the end, they had, they tied a chain to the pontoon and hooked it up to some guy's hitch. They had about five cops standing on the dock, pushing on the pontoon while this guy pulled it up and all of us standing on the side videoing and laughing at him. So, you know what? I think in the moment, you probably were pretty frustrated. Am I correct in that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Think of how much mileage you've gotten out of this moment, though. You're calling into the podcast talking about it. I imagine you went to the bar later that night and talked about it. I bet every family gathering, if you were maybe with a family member while this was happening, say, hey, remember that jackass who almost pulled the whole dock out of the thing? You've got hey, in the moment, tough. But now I'm starting to think that this was a pretty big moment for where you're at, and it probably even made the local newspaper. Yeah, the hard work is done here. Now you just have to tell it, tell and retell the story. And you got to keep making it more extreme. You know, this guy, he pulled up to the dock. There was, uh, there was about eight docks at this landing, and he was hooked up to all of them somehow. <laughs> and he got a rope in the motor, and you just got to keep exaggerating the story until it's basically like when that boat got caught in the canal and stopped all the trade <laughs> to North America. <laughs> I mean, that's what this that's thing's got to turn into. Was this the yeah, that, Suez Canal? That's a good canal? point. So, yeah. so, so, let me ask you guys: what's what's the dumbest guy you've seen at a boat launch? The dumbest guy we've seen at Ready? a boat launch. Three, two, one. The Charlie dumbest Barons. guy. What? God, I thought, I thought you were we were up. repeating the, no, the deal. No, I thought we were naming who was Okay, let's dumb. do it again. Let's do it again. Three, Three two, two, one. Miles. Charlie Barons. So the fact that it, here, here's the deal. Miles, I watched him get up to a boat launch, and we were doing this for a sketch, and he was actually using his backup camera. And I was like, I come on. I absolutely fucking was not. You were. I was not. You weren't? I was not. I remember you were. That was part of the bit. Oh, see, this is why I can't remember Our anything. Our life meshes between bits and real life quite okay. often. So. Okay, L- let's get to the question here, though. The the weirdest, the what was it? The worst it, people we've seen at a boat launch. So my, bu- yeah. my buddy uh, growing up, my buddy and his dad. What's his name? My buddy, Jay. 
Jay. and his dad Pete. God bless him. He's he's up there, but up he's up in heaven listening down to this story. And oh my God, I have never seen two people go at it like like Pete Riley and Jay Riley when they got to a boat launch. It was like every issue they had between father and son would come out at yeah, the boat launch. It wasn't even about the boat anymore. It was no. about <laughs> the childhood trauma or this and that. Because right? Jay would be Jay would be in the boat and he'd drop his dad off. His dad would bring the car back uh, and back the trailer, and then they'd be landing the boat on the thing. And Jay would do it his way. And Pete would want it done his way. And the best part about this is, uh, and this is why a boat launch is so perfect for for these kinds of elevated things, is everything gets escalated the more people are watching. And there's when there's only one in, one out, you've got an embedded audience. And the, the all of Pine Lake was watching this father and this son work out their differences with each other. And it was... Hilarious. It took 45 minutes, I think. Very quiet ride home. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think the tough part about when it doesn't go well at the landing is the when it starts going a little bad, it only gets amplified the more cars waiting, right? So yep. you let's say you got, uh, what should we call this fellow that, that hooked onto the dock, right? Let's say we'll call him uh, Derek. Derek jackknifes it, right? Derek jackknifes He didn't just de- jackknife it. He jackknifed it in front of 20 other people waiting to go, which causes another level of anxiety. It causes another level of panic and therefore causes you to jackknife it the other way. And now you've done a double jackknife and you haven't got the can of soup open yet. And, <laughs> and all of a sudden, no one's getting to eat. And but it's still boiling over and it's just a, a scenario no one wants to be a part of. And I think you experienced there that there that day. Yeah. You know what? Now that you say it like that, the boat launch is this this very rare moment where a lot of people who are not used to like public speaking or being out in front of everyone, they are now on a stage. The boat launch isn't just a boat launch. The boat launch is a a stage. stage. And you are the actors in the theater. And everybody, every drunk jackass at the boat landing. has got a tomato in their (laughs) hand, just waiting it to throw it on that stage. And they will magnify (laughs) your mistakes because just like you're doing, I bet you this pontoon thing is probably 70% as bad as you said it was, but you have made it even worse because now you're talking about it. So if somebody, which is your prerogative, you know, you want to, you want to amplify, you want to tell the story unless it really was that bad. Well, yeah, it probably was. Uh, But you can also tell when someone else has had, has failed at a boat launch before because you guys are all making fun of him, right? Taking videos, laughing, whatever. Then there's always another guy who's like, come on, guys, give him a break. Yeah. <laughs> just oh, just yeah. <laughs> give him a break. He's ha- It's tough, you know? It's, uh, there's uh, The landing isn't that straight. And, you know, it's like it drops off right away. Come on, guys. It's fine. You know, that guy has also jackknifed a trailer at a boat landing. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> That's Miles for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, just cut him some slack, okay? Hey, we all been there, all right? Yeah, we've all been there, right, guys? Right? Have, have you, you been, been there? there? Yeah. Have you been there? Um, not with an audience, I have not, thankfully. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. You you know, that's look, I think it, we got to give we can't just sit up here and rag on people. We got to give them some to walk away with. OK, what are the what are the top three tips for landing a boat? Miles. Oh, I thought we were asking him. Oh, well, we, yeah. Well, let's go. Top three tips. We'll each say one. We'll each okay, say one. So we'll each get one tip. Go ahead. What is the top three tip for landing a boat? Um, my tip is definitely have the, have the, uh, winch pulled out. Cause a lot of people just pull it up without the winch pulled up. And then mm. that's a huge issue too. If that's not out to begin with. Mm-hmm. All right. Good tip. My tip, bring an extra person to lobby to the other people waiting in line to smooth over all of the <laughs> anger. <laughs> right? If it's taking you too long at the landing, have someone in your group kind of razzing you as well. To the other people waiting, being like, "Yeah, sorry, it's this guy's first time. Whatever, smooth it all over." Handing out some beers, you yeah, know. Here, have, have a, a beer. It's gonna be a while. Tip, 
tip number one, <laughs> one A and B, have some extra beer, maybe have a little uh, uh, butter shots available while everyone's waiting to, and all of a sudden people forget all about launching the boat and they're like, wow, these guys, although they suck at launching a boat, they have, they're here to have some fun. Yeah, and now we're having fun. And That's now a great all of a tip. sudden we take yeah. the bar out of the bar and put it at the landing and it's a good time. So, so the solution is to open up a concessions at the boat launch, and then you make money and walk away with the show at the end of it too. That is yeah, it could absolutely be absolutely it. great. It's just a roll-up cooler. That's your and concession you've stand. You've given conversation pieces to everyone involved. You've gotten everyone with some uh, with some drinks, and you know we all walk away being like, "Hey, it's a great day on the lake," because that's what it's all about. That is what it's all about. Um, my tip is going to be uh, resolve your backing up issues and your emotional issues <laughs> before you go to the boat landing. Well, that's never going to happen. I honestly just go to a parking lot and spend an hour in the parking lot just backing it up. Church parking lot. It's fantastic. Well, oh, here we go. Resolve all of the emotional damage when you're hooking up to the trailer at the beginning at home. Yeah, but it's the stress. That's what brings yeah, it out. That's true. The that's added true. stress because you're, you're embarrassed that other people are watching. And you're like, will you just do this? And I, I've had the same thing with my uh, my dad as well. It's not just my buddy, Jay. I've had the, I've had the same things. Although my. Oh, thank you. Oh, I just got a beer. Just got a beer. See? That's nice. Now you're, you're feeling good. That's what needs to happen. You know what? Miles might have might have might have won with the advice, you know, and all basically, right. Basically, how we solve anything in the Midwest is we just mix in a few beers and everything's going to be all right. That's it. That's <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> put that on a hat and sell it. Yeah, we will. Maybe. <laughs> well, did we answer your question? Kind of, sort of, maybe. Yeah, I, I got one last quick question. Kind of going along with that. I'll make it fast. All right. So once good. you get the boat, well, once you get the boat in successfully, if you can manage to do that, Say I'm going, uh, I'm going walleye fishing, bass fishing, you name it. And it's on, say it's on kind of a small lake and I got a, got a tinkle a little bit, yeah. but I'm kind of close to cottages. Am I just, am I giving the cottages a show? Am I bending down? What's, <laughs> what's the best solution to that? I, I, would, uh, <laughs> I think you're giving them a show. If you're from where I'm from, I ain't getting much show anyways. So uh, what are you worried about? <laughs> If you're me, you ain't, they ain't getting much of a show. So <laughs> let her rip. They got yeah, uh, I I would hang it. Yeah. I mean, they got to like at that moment have to have a spotting scope or binoculars up to their eyeballs to yeah. even it, know what's going on from shore, even it, if you're only about thirty yards out. So I mean, yeah, <laughs> I think you let her rip. I think you let her rip too. Yeah. The problem is, you know. Um, are you are you are you what what time of day is this that that really impacts it as well oh it's, it's daytime yeah the sun's yeah. out okay. all you got to do is grab the needle nose from the tackle box <laughs> and then so you can aim and then just let her rip <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that? That was a small pecker joke. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I got that. <laughs> uh, do you have any? I, I got to ask you this. This you guy's have, like, screw these guys. I got a hog. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any sisters? Do I have any what? Sisters. I, I have one, yes. Okay. Do you ever, if she's in the boat is, and she's got to pee and then you're just pissing off the boat, is, is she like getting annoyed? Like, why can't I do that? You know? Yeah, she typically just sucks it up and holds it till the end. But yeah, this guy is just have the ability to go. Go as we please, I guess. I th you know what? I we started this off by saying that I, I got eight sisters, which is what why I bring this up. You have eight? Eight, yeah. Oh my yeah. Man. Yeah, and they, they if they if they listen to this, they're gonna be like that seventy percent about backing out the boat. Why don't you go back out the boat and then I'll go back out the boat? We'll see who's seventy percent, Charlie. And then they'll they'll be talking about this boat thing about sitting in the boat, and they gotta hold it. They've gotta have stronger bladders than the guys. Make an item for women in this current situation. It's called the shiwi. Oh, the shiwi. Yeah, it's like a basically a funnel that you just use as a woman, and it acts as if you are 
a man. That's cool. Yeah. So maybe you got okay, to invest so in we, the so we have she- so we have Shiwis and buckets at the concessions then too. Yes. Ah, yeah. I see. We're we're building this together. Yes. There we go. The old Shiwis and beer. That's yeah. all you need. Yeah. Maybe a Shiwi attached to the koozie <laughs> with the beer. Well, you, you got a you got a beer inside a koozie. Shiwi attached. I yeah. mean, it's not a used Shiwi. Bottle opener slash Shiwi would do that. You know. Uh. <laughs> I think we I think we learned a lot on this episode. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you not only solved my solution, but also gave me a business idea. So thanks yes. a lot, there guys. You go. There you yeah, go. Yeah, just like basically do a food truck at busy launch sites at lakes and just sell beers out of the right there, out of the truck. And and the shiwis, yep. <laughs> oh yeah, the shiwis, sorry, yeah. Hey, also, Shiwis are not a sponsor, okay? That yeah. was a genuine pl- Yeah. <laughs> So we are not, we have not been paid by Shiwi to say said information. What if we were? We were like, oh God, we finally were able to work in Shiwi <laughs> without it being weird. It worked out. Well, ba- based on Miles' situation, it kind of sounds like he might need a Shiwi. <laughs> you know, you want to know why I know so much about it? I use it a lot. Okay. Uh, it helps. The old assist. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I like this guy. Yeah. But also, fuck you, okay? <laughs> it's not that small, all right? <laughs> all right. Well, we appreciate you calling in, I guess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> could have done without that last comment, but okay. Thought things were going good. Now we're fighting at the boat landing. It's a whole thing. But uh, yeah, you walk up to a guy and give him a shiwi and he'll be like, really, dude? Mm. That's how you really get the juices flowing. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for calling in, man. This is good. We got some, you know, we oh, hit the hey, hard lot, subjects some- on this podcast. So. Oh, yeah, you gave me some good advice. So thanks a lot. All right. Good luck backing her out. <laughs> oh, yeah. You too. Take it easy. All See right. Bye bye. You know, Charlie, Miles. That's what, I think I just figured out what you're giving your sisters for Christmas gift this year. Uh, what's that? A she she we? Yeah. 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 You, go, you know, hey, stop I, your bitching on the boat. Here's a she we have yourself a she we uh, that way. They don't need to jump in the lake. You know, that's yeah. usually the move. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, I don't want to get my hair wet. You know, one of those deals. And yeah. It's like here. Here's a she we yeah, you don't need to pee on your hair anymore. You know? <laughs> Because <laughs> if you're going in the lake to pee and then your hair is in the That's lake. That's true. You know? That is true. And and it's hair like, absorbs a lot of shit. So Yes, and pee as well. And pee. Shit yeah. And pee. Yeah. All right. Well, How are you gonna do don't go. lie to me. Do you think any of your sisters would enjoy getting a she wee for Christmas so that for the same boat scenario? Honestly, I think they would really like a she wee. I think they'd be like, funny. what is this? Uh, Oh. oh, oh my God. That's so thoughtful. Oh my God. This is like so useful yeah. Um, until they realize like what they actually have to do to do the she we out in the lake. You know, you're just standing you there just letting it all hang out. I don't know. Well, I mean, guys are I comfortable think, with it. I don't know if gals are comfortable with it. I mean, it. the she we's the only thing hanging out. Right. I mean, theoretically, yes. Yeah. I mean, you're turning There's the same a transition way. process is all I'm saying. You've got more to all right i i'd have to see the she we didn't know what we're talking about here you know what charles let's take uh, another caller and in between let's uh maybe take a look at the old she we all right that sounds good all right charlie it is december 22nd december wow how time flies where did the year go time flies like an arrow yeah fruit flies like a beet banana yeah um or yeah where Anyways. do we go from here miles it's we go to flea farm is what flea we do farm we, we love, love it. it guys it is almost christmas and we know for a fact you haven't bought anything i mean that's just How'd how it you goes. know yeah exactly <laughs> um and so if you are a last minute shopper just like charles and i you got to go to flea farm with only Christmas a few days away, the last minute shoppers can still count on Fleet Farm to find something for everyone on your list. Charlie? Yeah. Yes, Miles? 
You got? Are you going to be able to buy something at Fleet Farm for one of your siblings? Yes, of course, Miles, because uh, Fleet Farm has freaking something everything. For everyone on yeah, the list. Something for everyone on the list. You know, it's officially time to check that list off one by one on December 22nd. It's finally time. <laughs> <laughs> Toys and trim galore at crazy low prices. You wouldn't believe these low prices, Charles. I wouldn't. Just take a walk through the store, and I'm sure you'll find what you need. Low and prices. You, and what you don't need. Yeah, well, that's the most fun part about Fleet Farm is getting all the stuff you don't need. It's an adventure. It's an adventure. Fleet Farm's going to tell you what you need. Just go there, and the store will talk to you. The store what I say. will speak to you. I tell you what. Tell me why. I already, just, no, I already said that one. The <laughs> assortment <laughs> of items is unlike any other. Trust us. We find unusual us. treasures like um, gold and silver at Fleet Farm. We love it. Yeah, they have some. I've seen some some gold fishing lures there. Yeah, you yeah. just got to know where you go. Some silver fishing go. lures. I bet there's silver somewhere. I've there's seen probably some, uh, some rare earth metals. I've in seen the some batteries. red fishing lures. <laughs> I've seen some neon green fishing lures. Mostly yeah. the treasures there are fishing lures. They got the crankbaits, the, uh, the maps, the whole jigs, deal. the whole thing. Jigs. Um, what is a treasure that you found? I usually like going to the back 40 where everything's super discounted and you just, it's like, hey, run through there. You normally you'd be able to get a couple things with your budget. I can get like 15 things. It's a great time. Yeah. Um, you know, they've got some. Oh, well, I was going to say bird seed. I, they have great bird seed. At you're a bird farm. watcher. Makes sense. Yeah. So, guys, if you're also a bird watcher or if you're just a human being that lives on this earth, you're going to be able to find something. I got a real nice big farm. ratchet strap there the other day. It was really nice. Good. And I recommend you get that for people for Christmas, too. Yeah. You can't go wrong with a ratchet strap. <clears throat> Plus, Did we from the Flea Farm family <laughs> to yours, wishing you a Merry Christmas. All Flea Farm said Merry Christmas. Well, Merry Christmas, Flea Farm. Merry Farm. Christmas, that Flea means Farm. so much. What do you get for the store that has everything? A Merry Christmas. A Merry Christmas. All right, okay. guys, go to Flea Farm, buy your gifts. You have very little time <laughs> left. Go. Yeah. Go now. When you're at home for the holidays and you're in charge of dessert for Christmas dinner, bring some tippity tippity tappity cow. You can mix it, match it with flavors, make whatever you like. Right now, we're making orange Andy's candies because we got the shamrock mint. Yeah, Charlie had a little left in his last one. We just decided to pour the shamrock mint tippy cow flavor in there. Yeah. And now you're having an orange shamrock. Let mint. me tell you what. Are you getting no? I'm getting notes of it's not uh, that shamrocks. I'm also getting notes of mint as well in this one. Are you? Well, that you? could be because it's a shamrock mint tippy cow. Oh, I guess I didn't need to turn around to show you that. Yeah, they can see it already. Uh, shamrock um, mint tippy cow. Tip I'm this also in your... getting notes of cow. Um, Are you? you getting... I'm also getting notes of tips. Well, uh, the tips of the teats is where the milk comes from, and the mirror is I'm milk in the tippy notes cow. Of teats? <laughs> <laughs> a teat note. So uh, <laughs> check out Tippy Cow, bring it to Christmas, and people are going to love you for it. Buy their affection with Tippy Cow. Well, and my family's big after dinner drinks, people. Yeah. Grasshoppers, the whole thing. This mm-hmm. is usually my dad takes a whole 45 minutes to get all the after dinner. Just all you got to do, you buy a bottle. You put some ice in the glass, and then you pour the drink in the glass, and you got a after dinner drink. Little, it is that easy. Little concoction. It is, and it's delicious. So and get it tastes great. Get yourself some Tippy Cow. They got a website. You'll find it when you Google. And and just like, Google it. Just honestly, just Google it, and then also find it at your liquor stores. Great googly moogly. Found where all liquor stores have Tippy Cow. Who we talking to? Holy hell, I actually got through. Holy hell, yeah, you did. Who? What's your name? Where are you from? Where are you at? What you hauling? Uh, this is Austin. Uh, I'm a I'm a Chicago transplant, actually. You're a Chicago transplant, so Austin, what does that mean? So you went to Chicago, or you're from Chicago? I moved to Chicago. I'm from a, originally from a suburb of Minneapolis, and uh, 
then I went to school in uh, Wisconsin, and then I moved my way down to Chicago. So. You just uh, you're on you're just going south. I've weird. been everywhere, man. I've, I've been, been everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, you ever been to Palmer's? We're sitting at Palmer's right yeah, now. Where are we at, Jake? Wait, is this just Minneapolis or what? You ever been to Palmer's in Minneapolis? Never been to Palmer's in Minneapolis. Before. Well, Next you got to go. Home, you got you to gotta check go. it out. Um, yeah. Where'd you go to school in Wisconsin? I'm up there. Where'd you, well, go, that, where'd you go to school in Wisconsin? I went to Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Oh, Eau Claire. Sorry, he said that. Uh, I can't hear. Oh, yeah, you're good. Don't worry. Yeah, no, you don't yeah. need to turn yeah. it up. I'm Sorry. just an idiot. What is your favorite thing about Eau Claire, Wisconsin? Oh man, um, I think it's got to be the fall when um, the season's changing and like this is beautiful around the campus. All the colors. You know what? That's what I've heard a lot of people say that Eau Claire is just beautiful. Eau Claire is a it is very beautiful. And do you know what Eau Claire means in French? I do not. Um, uh, clear water. I believe it's clear water. Okay. Boom. Yeah, clear water. Boom. Oui, oui. I knew I had. <laughs> <laughs> oui, oui. Hey, uh, I got. Oui. I got a question. For oh you, yeah, for you guys. <laughs> He's trying to keep the conversation moving. He's like, hey. I no, you're get... good. <laughs> uh, you, ever to the dude, uh, you ever been to the Dude Dodge in Eau Claire, Wisconsin? By the way, you ever opened it up at six a.m.? <laughs> No, I haven't. I know what you're talking about, though. I haven't done that. Well, no matter how this <laughs> podcast goes down, man, let's go to Eau Claire and let's open up the Dew Dodge at 6 a.m. sometime. Uh, what do you some, think? Miles has never yeah, asked me to do good. that. Well, Charlie, <laughs> I like this guy. So, well, what's your question? What's your question, Chicago fella? So, you, what, are you, what are you guys drinking? What do you got in front of you right now? I have well, a bush light in front of me. I don't know what I have in front of we me. We also have Tippy Cow in front of us. I'm drinking the Shamrock Mint. It's a great for the holiday season. There you go. Found we're all so Shamrock Mint. I know you guys, you, get, you guys are always in spats with each other, Bushlight versus Lining Kugels, you know, whatever. But I, I have a reasonable compromise for you guys, I think. Okay. Um, have you ever had Green Belt Premium? Um, I... I have, and I am sticking with Bush Light is how I'd like to answer this. Oh, come on. Green, it, gr- it, it's a, green Belt it's Premium. It's a Minnesota brewed beer. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to yeah. let you talk. It's a Minnesota brewed beer, and what about it now? It's a Minnesota brewed beer, and I think it's a good compromise for you guys to you know meet in the middle of Minnesota between... Uh, uh, North Dakota and Wisconsin. Uh-huh. There you go. I, like- I don't know if you've ever met me before, but I can be <laughs> stubborn. So that's not a good enough argument for me to switch over. If I'm going to be honest with you, do you have more on that? You, you got another way to state your case here? I mean, it's just a solid, you know, clear yellow, nice drinking beer. Um, I will say, I think it might have a bit more, um, flavors for back of lack of better words uh than bush light but uh you know yeah i'll go own. ahead and drink a beer uh, that's like clearly not as crisp and clean as bush light that sounds like fun <laughs> grain belt <laughs> flavor just means that it's got a little skunky you know that's what i've learned over the years <laughs> corona light I, I wow think- what a good flavorful beer aka it's just skunky doesn't grain belt come I in a think- clear glass it doesn't have to, but it it it, uh, it does. The premium does. The Northeast uh, comes in an amber glass. That's all I have to say. It comes in a clear bottle. That means it's going to be a little skunky. Green Belt Premium I, sounds like something I'd put in in my gas tank. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I I cannot remember trying the beer. I'm sure it's great, uh, but yeah, it, they, it sounds like they they've got another beer called Ethanol, um, but. <laughs> so did you just call up this podcast to just tell to us, get me and you riled up yeah you did you yeah. just call to say don't drink the beers from wisconsin don't have miles drink his whatever he drinks you know <laughs> just drink your beer now are you an investor in this it sounds like he, he's got he's other an, alternative motives here. yeah he probably works for him. the ironic part is i actually work for a brewery that is none of these oh wow. which, uh i don't have a horse in this race other than 
I think that this is a good compromise for you guys. And I will say this podcast has been getting me through some long shifts at the brewery. And uh, I don't know how much longer I can stand you, know, you two bickering over. <laughs> this, <laughs> this hey, you know what else could so help you get find through? A solution for you guys to come to. Here. You know what else could help you get through a long shift at said brewery? Is drinking a really good beer like Bush Light. That'll help you get through it. <laughs> You know what? Let's. Uh, I'll tell you what, man. You you get you get drunk while you're uh, canning beer one time, and you don't do it again yeah. because and it suddenly none like, of the cans have lids then, on them. You know, it's like a weird thing. Well, and then you realize you have four more hours ahead of you, and it's just not going to be fun. What do you do at the brewery? Uh, I mostly work in packaging, so I make sure the beer gets from Heffernan. the tank into kegs, cans, you name it. Um, and then I also do warehouse stuff, but, um, I don't do any of it. They don't trust me with it. Uh, are you, are you forklift certified? You're damn right. I am. That is so cool. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I wish I was forklift certified. That's it's, pretty cool. It's honestly, it's honestly the best superpower. I think I, have. I know I'm uh, jealous. Wait, talk me through getting <laughs> forklift certified. What's it take? Well, so, I mean... So we're going to find out if he's uh, actually forklift uh, certified. <laughs> so, I, I, uh, by a technicality, I'm forklift certified. Oh, so I see. Forklift his boss, his boss told him, out. hey, if anyone ever asks you if you're forklift certified, just tell him yes. <laughs> is what his boss told him. <laughs> is that what's happening right now? No, it's I, I drive a forklift all the time. That doesn't to, mean yeah. you're forklift certified, man. I'll, I'll take on a forklift, cert, an actual forklift certified dude any day. And yeah. We'll see how we're, so there know, we go. He's, we'll go he's definitely not forklift certified. And that's one thing you want to learn about warehouse work. 80% of people who say they're forklift certified are not forklift certified. I drive a forklift at work. I just, I just gotta. He's <laughs> just not, and he said that is here. true. He Do you drive true. a forklift at work? Me? You talk, yeah. No, this I don't. Is, this is I'm not, not forklift certified. <laughs> this is not an issue of do you drive the 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 forklift. We are all pretty confident you're driving that forklift. The question is, are you driving it into the side of the wall at some point because you're not forklift certified? I've never. Possibly, maybe drove driven the forks into something that I wasn't supposed because to. Because what happened? He was doing before that. His first four hours of his shift, he was drinking while he was doing the canning line, and then <laughs> and I don't want to say it, but then he maybe illegally operated a forklift and hit the wall. Is what it sounds like. You know, and you live and you learn, and I guess that's what we're what we're doing today. What we're all about on this podcast. I'm not going to, I'm not, uh, what's, um, he still hasn't told us anything, what it takes to be forklift certified because he's not even started the process. He's not, he doesn't even know where to start. Do you even take the online class? (laughs) Have you watched a YouTube video at least? I, uh, I, I I got instructed by the owner on what to do. And then uh, he made me watch a bunch of YouTube, uh, fail compilations. Rolls them under the bus. I know. Just through his boss. Yeah. Where do you work? Where do you work? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Yeah. Don't answer that. that. Don't answer that. You know, if you want to know everyone at Anheuser Busch is forklift certified actually, and they'd be proud to talk about where they work. Oh, we had to bring it back to this, huh? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, see what you did here? You call yeah. up having talking beer and uh, you, if you know. walk into the lion's den. You're going to get eaten. I'm just saying, you know, uh, it's fine. But I'm just saying um, you guys should probably drink Grain Belt or get around, get around, get around a Grain Belt. Yeah, OK, well, uh, hey, if you're in you're if you're in Minnesota, you should. It might even be on draft. You know what? So hey, you don't even have to worry about. Scum. I'll get around to it. It just is going to be. A big roundabout. (laughs) Miles. It's a long bend around is what I'm saying. Miles discovered puns on on an earlier uh, call we had, and it was all about asses. And now he's he's Mm. playing the same game here, and I'm I'm calling him out. You know, I'm saying 
Dang, I had one and I it was going to be really fun. Here, I'll, I'll help you <laughs> out. I'll, I'll help you out. I'll help you out, okay? Yeah. You know what? The best is. So say Charlie's kind of the, uh, the the rhyme and pun dude on the show. Is Miles yeah. trying to go toe to toe with you? Yeah, I have been this, this episode. <laughs> and I tell you what, yeah, you have yeah. a couple two tree bush lights and you just might end up ass over tea kettle. That that's good, but Miles, they would have had to have heard the other one. Well, in the order. people listening, he hasn't heard it yet, but the people listening at this episode. Have oh, heard okay. This, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that would have been funny. I hate having to explain a good. joke. It's no, hilarious. now it's funny. It's funny in retrospect. Oh, I'm so glad we're here today all together. Do you have any other questions oh, yeah. that we can answer for you? Uh, yeah, before you also you... made proclamations more than you did ask a question. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. You have anything you can buy, sell, or trade before we let you go? Oh man, um, I'm a I'm a man of many skills, including forklifting things. I don't own a forklift though, so I don't know. Um, I'd have to, have to source that. But, what's your favorite yeah, fork? Yeah, what's your fa- uh, What's your favorite forklift maneuver? Yeah. Uh, I love a good, uh, you know, 180 turn. Like if you're in the space, you need to just like shift it, you know, you're in stay in the same spot. Uh, that is pretty, hot. The, the rear steering on it's pretty, it's pretty nifty. Not going to lie. And it's, you know, to be honest, it's kind of weird because I'll like some days I'll be driving the forklift and then, uh, I'll drive home in my car and I'll have to parallel park my car. And it's so much harder when you don't have rear steering. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I feel that. Um, <laughs> do you ever use the 180 maneuver as a pickup line at the bar? Uh, well, I'm a, I'm in a pretty committed relationship, but I'll tell you what: the next time I meet my uh, my partner at a bar, I'll uh, I'll walk up to her and give her that. Yeah, give her. Uh, okay. Hey, yeah. if I have my forklift right now, I'd park this <sighs> big forklift. Yeah, I don't even got to do it at the bar. I suppose in the bedroom would work too, huh? Oh, there All we right. go. Time, yeah, there to, we go. time to park this fork right right in where it needs to be. I want to park <laughs> that fork lift <laughs> right in your little garage. Garage. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, do you have one of the yeah. stick shift forklifts yeah. or no? Hey, you got it. No, it's electric. So, uh, oh. It's all, boogie, woogie, yeah, woogie. Yeah, it's, a, it's a Yale. Uh, I don't know exactly what model, but it's a Yale. It's electric. You know who would um, know what kind of model it is? Someone who's forklift certified because that guy knows his machine. Yeah, go to school, for God's <laughs> All sake. Right. All right. Jeez. All right. All right. Quick cutting <laughs> corners, okay? <laughs> you cut Look, corners with a forklift, is. shit's getting falling over. It's, yeah. It's a mess. First yeah. thing you know, you're cutting corners with a forklift. The next thing you know, you're cutting corners with a knife lift. And then what's that going to do? How do you cut corners with it? There was something. There was a, a joke lift. in there. I, I There was a fork knife thing. Sometimes I, I start a it. sentence and I don't know where it's going to end I, up. I know. It's like it's like jumping <laughs> off a plane. Did I put the parachute on? Nope. Oh, shit. We're all just going to deal with this joke. There's something there, though. Yeah, there like is. Like a forklift. I was just going to go the office route. Where every time that he makes a mess in the warehouse, he just goes, we'll get someone to clean that up. And they're like, I got to clean that up. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, so I'll I'll leave you guys with uh, one thing. This is mostly for Charlie. Yeah, um, yeah. Lifelong uh, lifelong Packer fan. Grew up as a Packer fan. Um, I moved to Chicago and I got a, I got a job at a Bills bar of all places. A Bills bar. Wow. Yeah. I got to start yep, over with you. I don't. This is I'm the most confu- You're the most interesting man in the world. Yeah. Pack, yeah. Now, first grew of all, grew up you, in Minneapolis. He, oh yeah. Packer fan moves to Wisconsin, goes to the beautiful Eau Claire, then goes to Chicago, works at a Bills bar, says he's forklift certified, not forklift certified, the whole thing. Works at a brewery, but he's pushing another grain yeah, belt beer. It's, very confused. You're the most interesting man in the world. Your What's life is a spider web. Hey man, I mean, if you want to know the reality, this is what happens when you get two degrees in music. <laughs> <laughs> Two degrees in music equals you have zero degrees. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> don't you wish uh, yeah. someone like, don't you wish we started this podcast earlier and you could have called in and said, hey, Miles, Charlie, 
is it a good idea to get two degrees in music? And we would have said, dude, just get fucking forklift certified. <laughs> <laughs> That'd have been but, money uh, well spent, wouldn't it have? Wait, let him finish yeah, the I mean, converse. Probably. Well, all right. Well, all right. Well, yeah, I, I want to figure out where you're yeah. going with this. So you, you, you're, yeah, you're a so, Packers okay. fan, and, and now you're working in a Bills bar. Uh, I okay. was, and it's you a were. great place, but now I work at the brewery. But um, right. I'm not going to lie, I kind of... Uh, don't you don't shut your dirty shut your dirty mouth do not do not no he say he says he's part of the bills mafia now oh uh, you know what you enjoy that okay grow up in minneapolis be a packers fan and be a part of bills mafia that's not how the world works yeah 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 we have we have issues you know this is like when you, you 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 said you were a packers fan you came hot out the gate with that okay and then that's like when you came hot out I the I gate i grew saying, up as a packers fan i said i grew up as a Packers. so he's fan. no longer oh he's no not. longer a packers fan Did he's you now give a up? Bills fan how old are you uh now yeah 28 you're 28 so i, you know I what? can't even believe him there it sounded like he was lying about it did like that too i don't know who this is well you should go back and watch the espn classic episodes of the bills in the 90s and how many super bowls they lost in a <laughs> row and then hey, you think hey. long and hard if you want that 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 to be your now look i respect the bills mostly because they've lost uh they've her, seen pain they've seen pain they've been through it oh yeah and oh yeah look if the packers are out i'd be happy to consider pulling for the bills okay I got um, the Packers out by this point. No, yeah. they're not out yet. We do, we have a we have a well, we have a chance. By the time this comes out, the Packers are going to be. Out. <laughs> so you're going to eat those words, Miles. I'm going to serve them to you. Anyways, well, look. So you want to be a Bills fan now? Is that it? Is that it? Well, you, you want to so be a Bills, a Bills fan? Then get out of this house. Yeah, working at the- if you want to be a Bills fan. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I love all this whole thing. We just haven't let him talk. <laughs> <I know. laughs> That's better that way. I promise. Okay, go ahead. You uh, have the floor. What were you going to say? Defend yourself here. No. So I, you know, I know there's been a lot of recommendations on uh, including places in the Midwest. I, I think Buffalo, New York by itself. Oh, I mean, honorary Midwest. I think that actually think we've had that is the gateway to the Midwest is what someone said. Yeah. yeah. And, and oh. <clears throat> yep. And it, is. it is. We've agreed. Yep. We uh, yep. y- y- it's yep. already there. there OK. Hey, there it is. Maybe I haven't I haven't heard that part. But, yeah. uh, you know, they got great wings. They get way more snow than we do. Um, so much snow. Do you see uh, all that snow they got before that one game? Oh, yeah. Where it is. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of snow, and I'm from North Dakota, and we see some snow up here. They literally, like, I, you like, we're way further north than Wisconsin. Yeah, and we get some snow, but that was snow like I never seen it. That was lake effect snow. What they could have done is taken all that snow and made like a dome with and played inside. <laughs> yes, yeah. with an the igloo. Snow. You know, like yeah. when the um, let's say the the snow plows push everything into one spot as a kid. Yeah, and then you and your buddies yeah, take shovels go, and make tunnels right and stuff. It. You did that too. Oh, Did yeah. it ever fall on you and you get trapped? Well, we had that happen once, you know. <laughs> God rest his soul, neighbor kid. Um, it turns happens. Out, turns out it's first dangerous. responders weren't that fast at responding <laughs> to a bunch of kids in a snow pile. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Yep. That never happened. Yep. Everyone who got piled on is still alive today, I promise you. Um, but, yeah, yeah, it's the same thing. They could have just dug through the stadium, dug out enough for everyone in their stands to see it, and then had the little, like, snow dome over the top. A little snow dome, like they're playing in a snow globe. Well, they should have doubled down. They should have moved all the snow into the stadium and dug it out instead of trying to get it out of the stadium. Miles. Put more snow in the stadium. 100%. Miles, I think they kind of tried that with the Metrodome. When the roof <laughs> like and we all know. No, 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 the snow is the roof. We don't put snow on. On oh, the roof, yeah, yeah. There's... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah there you go. Yeah, we all know how that ended. <laughs> In a beautiful stadium that is U.S. Bank, which I just was at. Oh yeah, it is a beautiful stadium. Except you for if you sit on the path. one side, I was, I was on the one side with the glass on the opposite side. I should have brought my sunglasses. I couldn't see a thing for the first three quarters. It was a noon game. We got it. Can't they put a little tint? Can't they put a little tint on those glass at the glass on the U.S. Bank? 
Have you been in the U.S. Bank Stadium before? I don't go into enemy territory. You just were at a Chicago Bears game. That's different. Someone gave me tickets for free. But all I'm saying is if we can just get a film <laughs> of, of tint on the top of U.S. Bank Stadium, that'd be nice for everyone sitting on the side that faces it because my mom, her corneas are shot. I at least had a hat on so I could kind of block some of the sun. My mom, I went to the game with her. She, I mean, she's going to have to have cataract surgery next month, I think, because of just sitting there staring in the sun the whole game. Really? I'm yeah. surprised that they didn't figure that one out. <laughs> I know, but they didn't, they don't got me on the board over there. So, well, <laughs> soon enough. Do you like how you've just been <laughs> sitting here listening to Miles is, uh, his son proposition. Did you have something to add about that? Son's I- undefeated, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I've actually never been to the U.S. Bank Stadium. It's bring some sunglasses. Pretty, pretty darn big. That's funny. They need to bring sunglasses to an indoor stadium. Yeah. So. <laughs> and also, when it was high noon, right at the beginning of the game, it was hot in there. It's like a greenhouse. Yeah. I mean, it felt like I was. I bet. I was beaten up sitting there, sweating. They should just start growing. They should just have real grass in there at that point. I, probably. Honestly, it's a greenhouse. They should. Oh, why don't they? I mean, that seems like they could. Well, <laughs> anyways. Well, I yeah, suppose. I suppose we better. Uh, we we better. venture on out to the. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, you you, you well, two have a good day. Well, uh, we appreciate ooh. you calling in. I know we gave you some good advice today. Well, we gave you advice, anyways. Oh, yeah. yeah, we gave oh, uh, you advice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I I might go get my real forklift certification, but I kind of like being a a cowboy. You know, he kind of like he, he loves the thrill of being the bad boy. Yeah. He's yeah. the bad boy of the warehouse. He's like, you know, I could go get. Trust me, I could go get certified, but I don't need to. Yeah. You don't need certification. Go ahead. Why don't you arrest me, OSHA? <laughs> <laughs> they might. They don't fuck around. Oh, I can't say that. Can I? Well, oh, you can't say the F word, but you hey, can say the fact know, that. Okay. Fuck around, fuck around. Pretty soon you won't be around. Remember that. Yeah. Hey, there you go. <laughs> and remember that OSHA is listening to our podcast. They're always listening. Uh, they're, they're, they got cameras everywhere, man. I'm convinced. They do. So after we get off this call, we're going to triangulate what brewery you work at. Yeah. We're totally going to call our shut. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we ain't the, no narcs. Can I, can I, I want to I wanna send you some beer. I think you guys would actually enjoy it because it's not, we don't yeah. brew any IPAs. So uh, <laughs> you can send it to, the, t- I'll just give you my address right now. <laughs> yeah, sure. It sounds good. Yeah. It's uh, 12, <laughs> you're right, 1201. Fuck off lane. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, uh, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. Charlie, I tell him your address and then I'll try it when I come over. Why don't we message you the address here? Because <laughs> the last thing I want to do is say my address and then have uh, a bunch of people send, you know, someone, someone might send oh, a yeah. nudie or something, you know, and oh, that's oh, what you're yeah, worried about. Yeah, you don't want that. No, uh, Charlie just hates I mean, getting nudes. Too, but it, it Charlie, could be duty or beer. So, you know, Charlie is a single guy. hates getting nudes. To be honest with you, I, there was this one time you'll enjoy this story. You got anywhere to go? Uh, no. Okay. How many, how, how many things mean, have you rammed the forklift into since we started talking <laughs> on the phone here? I got the day off. Oh. So I'm just at home. Honestly, your yeah. your job sounds amazing. I'll tell you a story. Getting getting the the nudies isn't all that it's cracked up to be. You know, you might think, oh yeah, yeah. If someone sent me a picture of whatnot. That's cool. But no, it's not. I remember this one time I was on my Facebook page of all pages. And I popped open my messenger and I wasn't looking. I wasn't looking at it. I was just, it was sitting there. It was open. My mom walks in the door and I'm like, Hey mom, how are you doing? And she goes, Oh my God, Charlie, what is that on my computer? Just two knockers, just straight up two knockers. Poor thing getting sent knockers all the time. That well, sucks. Well, when when your mother is walking in the door, dude, just looking, at, well, and then no, she's like, "That sucks." Then she asks, "Like, what website are you on?" I'm like, "I'm on Facebook," and she's like, "I'm on Facebook." That's I not am, on Facebook. Yeah, I am deleting that Facebook account of mine after that. But then, so you know, anyways, that that was that was a situation. 
Um, I tell you what, the, I got sent a pair of knockers as well. Yeah. Uh, Anne was had like, access to the You Betcha account because she would like do stories and stuff and be at events. Yeah. She was like, well, here you go, Miles. This is what's going on. <laughs> I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. I mean, you know. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm the, you know, there. it's all God made it all. God made it all. He sure did. He sure, he sure did. did. He did. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Well, we appreciate you calling in. If you if yeah. you if you can on our next recording be looking for, let us know if you're forklift certified. But don't call in again until oh, okay. you're forklift certified, all right? That's your homework. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but, uh... He's gonna call in and lie again. <laughs> The best part is if we rewind the tape now to how affirmatively it was like, are you four clicks? Oh, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can't call into a podcast with bullshitters and try and bullshit a bullshitter. Yeah, I'll tell you what. We know. You can't do that. We, <laughs> we can sniff our we way sniff through it. out quick. <laughs> well, thanks for calling in, man. We appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you know, tell your folks this is high and, uh, you know, all that. Yeah, we'll do. <laughs> You too, okay? Oh, and, uh, okay, Derek. Okay. Guy. Watch out for deer in that forklift, okay? Uh, <laughs> watch, yeah, watch out for pallet racking. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. All right. Bye-bye right. bye right. now. Well, Charlie, I think that was another good episode of Bellied Up. What do you think? Well, Miles, it I was an so amazing episode. I'm so glad that I called him on his bullshit that he's not, because no one's actually forklift certified. You know, I, it, when, he, when he said that, uh, the way he said it, I I was kind of questioning it a little. In my Yours mind perked up a little bit. You're like, well, well I was just like, well, that's it. I first of all, I was not. Um, I was. I've never been forklift certified. No, in my no life. one has. That's the thing. I mean, I've driven one before. Yeah, me but too. But that's about it. You well, know? and the thing is, is it, that's how you find out. You you fuck around. You find out. You go, hey. <laughs> I go, hey. You know, talk to me about the process of getting forklift certified. He's like, ah, well, uh, <laughs> ah, well yeah, there's this uh, uh, thing, you know. So, uh, it's, you know, that's funny that you well, say my, that. You my know, boss it's, actually said, yeah, you know, really you mean. know, I, uh, it's a lot of that <laughs> going on. And you know, yeah. he's not telling the truth. So. Well, I mean, to, to, to be fair, you don't need to be golf cart certified. You know? Yeah, but also I do some weird things. I think there's a little cards. more power and uh, a lot. It goes a lot higher in the air. A forklift does. Yeah, but a golf cart, a golf cart, you can do some weird stuff with golf carts. No, not like you can a forklift. Yeah, you can kill people with forklifts. Like they could tip over and yeah. shit and hit pallet racking and. I suppose the worst thing you can do on a golf cart is just launch it up through a uh sand trap that's you know? true and yeah, there's another analogy out there you don't need to be car certified just kidding okay <laughs> all right all right well, well guys go check out the road hunt for ditch chickens hat they're on oh you betcha.com thanks for tuning into another episode and yeah everybody just watch for deer okay oh wait we had something else we wanted to say didn't we I think we did. Tip your bartender. Oh, yeah. Tip your bartender. And don't screw the pooch and not do that, okay? They also, tip up front so when you get to be a little bit intoxicated like I am, you know, then you, you're going to probably forget. But if you tip up front. Come in hot with a 20. Your bartender will love you. It's like, yeah. That's uh, you'll love them back. It's the way the world goes around. Right. That's the way. Love you guys. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.